I'm Keith Hoyle with Snowflake Computing, and I'll be going over our Netiza to Snowflake migration process. After a brief introduction, I'll be going over or discussing the preparation, execution uh, for the migration process, and finally the uh, uh, success factors. The purpose uh, of this presentation is to provide a high level methodology needed to prepare for and execute the migration of an existing Netiza system over to Snowflake. We should plan to not migrate any Netiza specific databases that are not needed in Snowflake, any of the metadata or information schemas. Only plan on, on migrating the actual customer data, business data that will be migrated. You should list out these, these uh, databases and all the objects, uh, the tables and views, any processes and, and tools that are used to populate the data, any security considerations, and list any uh, Snowflake accounts that will uh, need to exist or need to be created. Um, also needed will be the, the frequency of, of the security provisioning processes should be documented along with the specifics of the existing Netiza solution that is expected to be the migration in an as-is architecture. Snowflake generally recommends minimal re-engineering for the first iteration, unless your current system is truly broken. The more rework that is done, the more development and testing that will be required, which will most likely lead to a longer migration project duration and higher risk. In order to provide maximum value to the business as soon as possible, avoid a single big bang deliverable as your migration approach. And you should instead break them down into incremental deliverables that enable your organization to start making the transition to Snowflake more quickly. Your organization may want to change your development or deployment process as part of the migration. Whether the development and deployment processes change or not, capture the development environments that will be used for the migration. For example, pre-prod or prod, dev QA prod, and the deployment processes. For example, source control repository method for deploying changes from one environment to the other, et cetera. Uh, these, all of these that will be needed for the migration. This information is critical to direct the how of the development and deployments will be implemented. The ideal candidates for starting the migration combine providing value to the business and minimal migration effort. Rather than starting with the most complex data sets, begin with a simpler one that provides a quick win and establishes a foundation for the development and deployment process to build the rest of the migration from. To prioritize the data sets for migration, careful attention needs to be paid to understanding the process dependencies of the data sets. These dependencies need to be documented. The better the process migration work, the fewer blockers occur when additional dependencies are identified during the migration. Ideally, the documentation can be captured 
using an automated process that iterates through the existing job schedules and captures the data within Snowflake, rather than depending on manual work to identify and document changes. Creating an automated process provides value throughout the migration project by more easily identifying the ongoing changes that occur throughout the process. Since the underlying systems are unlikely to be static during the migration. Some common roles needed for the migration are developer, quality assurance, business owner, project manager, program manager, scrum master, and communication. When a Snowflake solution partner is engaged for a migration, they may fulfill multiple needs, including solution design, requirements gathering, documentation, development, testing, delivery, and training. The expectations for the migration should be completed and are an important input into the planning of the migration but they need to be combined with other information that has been gathered in order to determine whether the deadlines can be met. One of the benefits of gathering all of this information is to establish and communicate achievable deadlines, even if the deadlines are different than what the business expects. It's common for migration deadlines to be set before you are before evaluating the scope of the project to determine if the deadlines are achievable, especially if the business is trying to deprecate a system before a renewal date. In situations where the deadline can't be moved and the migration scope requires more time than is available before the deadline, work needs to be done with the business to agree on a path forward. Understanding the budget that has been allocated to complete the process is also critically important. The amount of migration work and the costs associated for the migration work need to be compared to the available budget to ensure that there is sufficient funds to complete the work. Pausing in the middle of a migration or stopping it altogether is a bad outcome for all parties involved. A Snowflake representative can provide a template and work with the customer to capture the virtual warehouses that are needed to do the work, for example, ETL or ELT, reporting or visualization, etc. The template calculates the number of minutes a warehouse is expected to run each day and the number of days a warehouse is expected to run each week. Once the template is filled in, it will provide estimated annual costs. This documentation should be used to validate the migration project and is providing the overall benefits the business expects to achieve from the migration. For example, if turning off an ATISA system was one of the desired outcomes, that outcome should be achieved by the migration plan. This documentation can be expressed as success or failure criteria for the migration project and may also include benchmarks that compare process execution on the TISA and Snowflake. Once compiled, this information should be used for communicating the wins of the migration project to the stakeholders. Depending on the security requirements, there may be a need to capture role creation, user creation, and the granting of users to roles for auditing purposes. While the existing NATISA system <coughs> security can be a good starting point for setting up the security within Snowflake, the NATISA security should be evaluated to determine if there are roles and users that are no longer needed or should be implemented differently as part of the migration to Snowflake. Additional roles may be required for restricting access to sensitive data. For example, schedules aren't 
executed in development, but only in QA and prod and data comparison between Natiza and Snowflake occur only for prod. Please be aware that since the Snowflake database contains the envir environment in its name, that any views that reference a database name in the view definition will also be updated as the view is deployed from one environment to the other. For example, deploying from QA to prod. There should be separate virtual warehouses for each environment, dev, QA, and prod, and for each function that the virtual warehouse will support. As the database, as the databases, database objects, and virtual warehouses are created, they should be assigned to the appropriate security roles. Depending on which Natiza environment the data came from and which Snowflake database is being populated, there may be an opportunity to use cloning to move one to move data within Snowflake from one database to another. This will require a few resources and loading the same data multiple times into different Snowflake databases. It is advisable to begin with a subset of the data from Natiza rather than trying to load the entire contents of a Natiza system at the beginning of the migration. The state of the data loading should be clearly understood and communicated. For example, loading is in progress, loaded, loading completed successfully, loading failures occurred that need to be addressed, etc. Additional groups should be engaged after the initial testing is completed that validates the data is ready for further scrutiny so that the first exposure these groups have to Snowflake isn't with obviously incorrect results. Any known reasons why the data won't match Natiza and Snowflake between the two should be documented and shared with groups who are testing so that they don't spend time researching previously identified issues and problems. T to facilitate comparing data between Natiza and Snowflake, there may be a need to create hashes as, as data is extracted from Natiza, which can be used to compare data at the row level between Natiza and Snowflake. These comparisons should take place in Snowflake where resources can be provisioned to compare data without negatively impacting Natiza performance. During the execution of the migration, the connection tools will need to be repointed to Snowflake once the data has been validated. Copying existing solutions that point to Natiza and update them to point to Snowflake will be part of the execution process, along with comparing the output of the tools to validate that the results are the same. After this, only after the Snowflake data has been validated can one cut over from the Natiza to Snowflake. This, this cutover should be communicated and scheduled with all stakeholders and be performed in a orderly fashion. Once the, co once the cutover is complete, we can turn off the processes that populate Natiza and revoke any access to that source system. After identifying differences between Natiza and Snowflake, they can be presented 
to the, the business along with the mitigation strategies that are available. We can confirm with the business that the proposed approach will meet the requirements in order to set these appropriate expectations from the beginning of the migration to sync up with the end of the process. The escalation process needs, needs to document each issue, who is responsible for working the issue, who's responsible for communicating, and a list of contacts from the business. Snowflake and any other involved parties that are involved in resolving these issues. Be sure everyone involved has access to and knows how to log a support ticket in the Snowflake portal. Likewise, they should know how to ask questions and find resources in the community forums. These published results can be communicated back to the stakeholders so that they clearly understand the benefits of the migration and that their time and money was well spent. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this was helpful.